it's Eric the Gilwell Fox. We're here on another hot day in Behold. We just entered the dry season and temperatures are really getting up there. But anyway, we're here today to start a new series on immobilization. What does that mean? Well, that's for sprains, strains, fractures, and dislocations. We need to immobilize that limb until we get, you know, to the to the medical facility. To the real help and in the back country oftentimes we have to improvise so right now we're going to talk about splints and there's three basic types of splints anatomical soft and rigid so first let's talk about the anatomical splint anatomical anatomy part of your body that's when if you broke a finger i could buddy tape it to the other and use your good finger as a splint. In the case of legs, I could splint one broken leg to the good leg. But when we do that, we need to make sure that we put some adequate padding in those, those hot spots, those pressure points where bones or joints will come together. And we'll have a later video on that. The next splint I'd like to talk about is a soft splint. That's something that's not a hard piece of wood or metal. It's generally soft, but what we can do is manipulate it in a way that it becomes rigid. So let's take this book here. It's rather flimsy, but when I bend it, it becomes rigid. So if we have a fracture in a forearm right here, if I use that and tie it to the limb, that will act as a rigid splint, even though it's soft material. And then finally, we want to talk about rigid splints. And we can use almost anything that's strong with that. Here I have a piece of bamboo cut. Bamboo is very strong. We can use that on an arm, we could use it on a lower leg even if we had to. Many people when they're in the back country use trekking poles. I like to carry trekking poles with me. I don't even use them all the time, but I have them as part of my kit, more as part of the first aid than uh, the actual hiking. And these are adjustable so I can fit it to the person. Now. When we are using rigid splints, if, especially if they're improvised, what we need to do is wrap them in something soft. We could wrap them in a t-shirt, a jacket. When I'm in the back country, I always have a scarf and we'll wrap that around. And we'll see how that's used in later videos. So what else do we need? We'll need some triangular bandages. Most of them will be in the narrow cravat form. And to know how to make the narrow cravat, you can see one of the earlier videos in bandaging. We also, if we're going to immobilize an arm, some upper limb, we're going to need to put it in a sling and then tie a binder or a swath to it. The sling will support that limb and the swath or binder will hold that limb to the body. And that's when we get full immobilization. So let's tie a sling right now. We'll show you because you may not need it with a, uh, with a split. Well, you need it with a splint, but you may not have to splint if you have just a, an injured arm that you don't want flailing around. So let's call Ben over. And Ben, why don't you sit down here? All right. So let's say Ben hurt his arm. And he's holding it. And usually when somebody is injured, you're going to find them holding it in a position of comfort. So right here is probably where it feels the best. So let's say it's not broken. We don't suspect a fracture, but he does have an injury. Maybe he fell, smacked his elbow, hurt his wrist, 
and we need to immobilize that arm. I'm going to take my triangular bandage. We're going to have the apex at the elbow. We'll put one of the ends over the shoulder. And this is one where there are many ways to do slings. I'll have the other end up underneath. I can tie this in the back in a square knot. And now here at the elbow, I'm just going to tie an overhand knot. That gives it a little pocket. We've got access to the fingers. So here we have the sling is supporting his arm. Now I would take a narrow cravat that under the arm, put on the arm down here, tie that in a square knot, tuck the ends in, and now I have bound this limb to his body so we're not, not flailing around like the chicken wing and that is supported. Does that feel good Ben? Yep. Perfect. And what we want when we when we use a sling, we want to leave the the fingers exposed. This way we can check the PMS. We want pulse, so we'll check his pulse. We'll check mobility. You wiggle your fingers. Yep. Great. Mm -hmm. And we'll check sensory. You can feel that? Yeah. And the other thing we want to check often is CRT capillary refill time. If you press on the fingernail, it'll the base will turn white. And when I let it go, it'll return to color. So that should be less than two seconds. If it's more than two seconds, we probably cut off some circulation and we need to undo it a little bit. So those are the immobilization basics. Stick with us for this series. We got some more videos coming your way. We'll see you around the campfire.